بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers so uh, we'll just continue from where we left off last week and um, uh, the Sheikh um, we finished off from the Sheikh's speech where he mentioned uh, this uh, paragraph here and then we said we'd stop and continue next week and finish this lesson uh, which way uh, the Sheikh is explaining the meaning of the second Shahada when we said uh, when we testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a prophet and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah so um, we're going to finish this today inshallah so the Shaykh says, فَلَا بُدَّ مَا لِتِرَاقْ بِرِسَالَتِهِ ظَاهِرًا وَبَاطِنًا وَأَتِقَادًا وَلَا بُدَّ مِنْ اتِّبَعِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَيَتَلَخَّسُ ذَلِكَ فِي هَذِي الْأَرْبَعِ فِي هَذِهِ الْأَرْبَعِ كَلِمَاتِ الَّتِي ذَكَرَاهَ الشَّيْخُ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهِ So then the Shaykh says, it's incumbent and it's a must that we uh, openly profess and proclaim uh, uh, the messengership of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam openly and inwardly um, and in our hearts in our belief uh, and and uh, no doubt uh, by following and in following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that which he came with so this is what the Sheikh says basically in this uh, paragraph that we read and then the Sheikh says that uh, this is summarized these four points or four areas uh, or sub areas are, are um, uh, summarized um, in what the Sheikh has mentioned. So then uh, the Sheikh is going to break this down now. Four points. He's going to start with the first and finish with the fourth. So we'll go through it bit by bit. So then the Sheikh he says, Al Ula Ta'atuhu fi ma amar. Yaqul Allahu Jalla wa Ala, Man yuti'ir Rasul faqad ata Allah. Wa yaqul Subhana. وما أرسلنا من رسول إلا ليطاع بإذن الله فقرن طاعة الرسول مع طاعته سبحانه وتعالى وقرن معصية الرسول مع معصيته ومن يأس الله ومن يأس الله ورسوله فإن له نار جهنم خالدين فيها أبدا وقال وإن تطيع وَإِن تُطِيعُ وَإِن تُ وَإِن تُطِيعُهُ تَحْتَدُ وَقَالَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ فَلَا بُدَّ مِنْ طَاعَتِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَالَّذِي يَشْهَدُ أَنَّهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ تُوزِمُهُ طَاعَتَهُ فِيمَا أَمَرَ لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ وَقَوْلُهُ فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ عَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةٌ أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ عَنْ عَمْرِهِ أَيْ عَنْ عَمْرِ الرَّسُولِ فَلَا بُدَّ مِنْ طَاعَةِ الرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم So then the Sheikh he says here in this long paragraph that we read the first point the Sheikh he says and that is uh, being obedient to the Prophet Sallallahu in that which he has commanded us with. And then the Shaykh brings some evidence. So the first of those evidences are from the Quran and is from Surah An-Nisa verse 80. Whoever is, obe- whoever is obedient to the Prophet Sallallahu then he has indeed been obedient to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then also, that's from Surah An-Nisa verse 80. Then we have another verse, Surah An-Nisa verse 64. Yeah, and then the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we haven't sent a messenger, we haven't, we haven't sent a messenger except that 
is obeyed. That is obeyed and that his commands are followed by the permission of Allah. Surah Nisa verse 64. So then the Shaykh he goes on to say, he says, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's basically connected the obedience of the Messenger of, us, of uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's clear from, from the ayahs that we've just read. That's very clear from there. And the Shaykh is just emphasizing for us as well. And also that there's a connection here between disobeying the Prophet sallallahu and also whoever disobeys the Prophet sallallahu then he's disobeyed Allah as well. In the same fashion, yeah? In the same way. And there's the ayah then that uh, the Shaykh quoted, وَمَنْ يَأْسِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولَهُ فَإِنَّ لَهُ نَارَ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا بَدَا So whoever is disobedient to Allah and his messenger, then indeed for him is the the fire of Jahannam. He'll, he'll, be, he'll, he'll dwell therein forever. And then that's Surah, that's surah Al-Jinn verse 23. And then the Shaykh also mentions the ayah after that. And if we look at that, Surah An-Nur verse 54, let's go there. Surah An-Nur verse 54, okay. That says verse 54 there, I think, yeah. Surah An-Nur verse 54. Say, obey Allah and obey the Messenger, but if you turn away, he, the Messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is only responsible for the duty placed on him. I to convey Allah's message. We'll just carry on reading. And then, and you for that, uh, just if you go back here, sorry. Say, obey Allah and obey the Messenger. But if you turn away, he, the Messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is only responsible for the duty placed on him. I to convey Allah's message and you for that placed on you. If you obey him, you shall be on the right guidance. So if you obey him, you shall be on the right guidance. So that's that particular part of this ayah. Yeah? So then the shaykh continues and he says, so it's incumbent that we, you know, are obedient to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So the one who testifies that he is the messenger of Allah and sticks to being obedient to him and that which is commanded him with, then... That's that uh, for the speech from the speech of Allah here, the Holy Ta'ala. The last ayah that we read, or the second last one from Surah Al Hashr. Let's go to Surah Al Hashr to get the answer. Surah Al Hashr. Give me one second, brothers. Verse 7, Surah Al Hashr, verse 7. It's towards the end of the ayah. And whatsoever the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa gives you, take it. And whatsoever he forbids you, abstain from it. And fear Allah. Verily Allah is severe in punishment. So that's what's being said in this ayah here. And then the finally, the, the final ayah that the Shaykh mentions in this paragraph is from Surah An-Nur verse 63. So let's go back to Surah An-Nur now. So if we go back to Surah to nur verse 63. And I believe it's towards the middle here. So just give me one second. Let's find it. So beware less some... Uh, yeah, so I'll just read, read it from this part. And let those who oppose the messenger... The messengers, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commandment, i.e. the sunnah, legal ways, orders, acts of worship, statements, etc. Among the sects, beware, lest some fitna, disbelief, trials, afflictions, earthquakes, killing, overpowered by a tyrant, etc. Befall them or painful torment be inflicted on them. So that's the, that's the second half of the ayah, the whole of it. So then if we continue, so that's the first point that we've covered. And the second point, then the Sheikh says, Asaniyatu. تصديقه فيما أخبر لأن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم أخبر عن أمور أمور كثيرة مغيبة أخبر عن الله وعن الملائكة وأخبر عن أمور غائبة وأخبر عن أمور مستقبلة من قيام الساعة وأشرات الساعة والجنة والنار 
وأخبر عن أمور ما أمور ماضية عن أحوال الأمم السابقة فلا بد من تصديقه فيما أخبر لأنه لأنه صدق لا كذب فيه قال تعالى وما ينطق عن الهوى إن هو إلا وحي يوحى شدن The Sheikh he mentions the second point and he says the second point is that we accept truthfully in that which he has um, that which the Prophet ﷺ has informed us of. So the information that the Prophet ﷺ has given to us that we believe it is the truth and we believe it open-heartedly and accept it. The Sheikh says because the Prophet ﷺ he informed us of many affairs and many of the affairs that are to do with the affairs of the unseen so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam informed us of for example of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels and also uh, the affairs of the unseen uh, he informed us of the likes of uh, uh, the future as well future events that will occur from the signs of the day of judgment he also uh, informed us about uh, paradise and the hellfire and he informed us of uh, affairs of the past and uh, the affairs of the past and the uh, the situations that the previous nations were, were were in so then the sheikh says that there, and therefore is incumbent and uh, important and incumbent upon us to uh, afford us to uh, 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 believe what the Prophet Sallallahu came with and, and, and take it as the truth because it is the truth and there is no lie in it whatsoever and then the Shaykh mentions an ayah from the Quran verse 3 to 4 of Surah Al-Najm for the proof so let's go there let's have a look at the meaning of the translation Surah Al-Najm where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala he mentions he says nor does he speak of his own desire It is only an inspiration that is inspired. So that the, the Prophet ﷺ only speaks of that which Allah has revealed to him. And he speaks the truth. And he does not speak from his desires. So then, um, the Shaykh continues then, we move on to the next paragraph. And he says, الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يتكلم بهذه الأخبار أو بهذه الأخبار أو هذه الأوامر والنواهي لا يتكلم بشيء من عنده عليه الصلاة والسلام إنما يتكلم بوحي من الله عز وجل فأخباره صدق ومن لم يصدقه فيما أخبر فليس بمؤمن ولا ولا صادق في شهادته أنه رسول الله كيف يشهد أنه رسول الله ويكذب ويكذبه في أخباره كيف يشهد أنه رسول الله ولا يطيع أمره. So then the Sheikh summarizes here from his previous paragraph and he says that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he doesn't speak uh, uh, and he doesn't inform us of of these this information that he's given us the the information and these commandments and and the prohibitions. He doesn't speak uh, a thing other than what Allah has revealed to him. So he doesn't come with anything from his own desires and his own self. Salatu wassalam. Yeah. Alayhi salatu wassalam. So then the, the Shaykh he says indeed then that the Prophet he is he's he is inspired by the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says what Allah has told him and revealed to him. Azawajal. So therefore, the information that he provides us, it is, it is the truth. And whoever doesn't believe this as the truth, in that which the Prophet ﷺ has informed us of, then he's not a believer. And also on top of that, his shahada that he makes when he makes a testification, Ashadu anna Muhammadun Rasulullah, that is not true. That that his his um, there's no truth. Fullness in his testification. The Sheikh says, "How can, how can he testify that the that 
that that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger of Allah, and he is not believing in the information that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with, and he's like saying that it's a lie. For example, he's saying the lies, for example, and falsifying it. So the Sheikh says, how can he testify that he is the messenger of Allah and he doesn't obey him in that which he has commanded him with? So that's, uh, that concludes the second point. So now we move on to the third point that the Sheikh had mentioned and he says, Athalithatu. He says, Ijtinabu ma naha anhu wa zajar Ijtanib ma nahaaka anhu al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Nahaaka an aqwalin wa af'alin وصفات كثيرة ولا ينهى صلى الله عليه وسلم إلا عن شيء فيه ضرر وفيه شر ولا يأمر إلا بشيء فيه خير وفيه بر أو وفيه بر فإذا لم يجتنب فإذا لم يجتنب العبد ما نهى عنه أو فإذا لم يجتنب العبد ما نهى عنه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لم يكن شاهدا له بالرسالة بل صار متناقضا كيف يشهد أنه رسول الله ولا يجتنب ما نهاه عنه الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم والله تعالى يقول وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا قال صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا نهيتكم عن شيء فاجتنبوه وإذا أمرتكم بأمر فأتوا منه ما استطعتم فلا بد من اجتناب ما نهى عنه صلى الله عليه وسلم So then the Sheikh he goes on to say here he says that um, staying far away from that which uh, he prohibited us from Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Staying far away from and disliking it So the Shaykh he says So stay far away from and avoid That which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Has prohibited us from For example From those things That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam For example has uh, uh, Prohibited us from Types of speech and actions And having certain characteristics and traits And then the Shaykh he mentions a benefit here and he says, and the Prophet ﷺ hasn't prohibited us from something. Uh, uh, he, he prohibited us from something because of it having harm, the harm because of the harms therein and the evil. And there isn't a thing that the Prophet ﷺ commands us with, except that it has good, it has much good in it, and it's um, it has much good in it. And it's pious. It's, it's a it's a pious. It's something pious that you're doing. Piety, it's piety in it. So if so, if a person, if a slave of Allah, for example, if a servant doesn't uh, avoid that which the Prophet has uh, prohibited from, then he isn't really testifying to the messengership of the Prophet Sallallahu because in his testification are contradictions, right? Because he says, I testify that the, mess- that the Prophet ﷺ is the messenger uh, of Allah, but then he's avoiding and not following that. Uh, he's not acting upon what the Prophet ﷺ has commanded him with and prohibited him from as an example. Uh, so, that, so therefore, there's contradictions now. So the Sheikh says, how can he testify that he is the messenger of Allah ﷺ, and then he doesn't avoid that which the Prophet ﷺ has Prohibited him from of, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says Which is the ayah that we read Which is from Surah Al-Hashr I think we read this earlier on as well Just just now A few minutes ago And let's go back there Towards the end of the ayah Ayah 7 And whatsoever he forbids you Abstain from it And fear Allah So And, and whatsoever the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Gives you Take it and whatsoever he forbids you, abstain from it and fear Allah. So that's what's being said in this ayah, Surah Al-Hashr verse 7, towards the end of this ayah. So then the Shaykh mentions the hadith as well. He says that the Prophet ﷺ said that if I prohibit you from something, then avoid it. And if I command you with something, then take it 
and follow it, as in carry out, execute that command as much that you are capable of doing, yeah? So then the Sheikh mentions, so then it's incumbent uh, that, 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 that we avoid what the Prophet ﷺ has prohibited us with. So if the Prophet ﷺ says, I prohibited you, pro prohibit you from this, then we should stay away from it. Yeah? So let's carry on. So now we move on to the fourth point. The Sheikh mentions, Al-Rabi'atu and la yu'bad Allahu illa bima shara' taqayyad fi al-ibadat bima shara'ahu Allahu li rasoolihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fala ta'ti fala ta'ti bi ibadatin lam yashra'ahu lam yashra'ha al-rasool sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa in kana qasduka hasanan wa in kunta turidu al-ajra lakin هذا عمل باطل لأنه لم يأتي به الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم النية لا تكفي بل لا بد من الاتباع and uh, I'll just explain this as well what the Sheikh is saying we'll just get, translate the explanation the Sheikh says point four and that you don't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except by that which he legislated so there's obviously restrictions in terms of worship that they are in accordance with what Allah has mentioned and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned. So you can't, you don't come, so you don't come with a worship that, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hasn't mentioned, hasn't given the example for. Basically, you know, even if you're, even if you had good intentions, you know, you want to do much good and all that. Except that you have to come with that which the Prophet ﷺ comes with. And the Sheikh concludes here towards the end of this paragraph that basically, in a nutshell, you, even though you have a, your intention is purely and sincerely for the sake of Allah, then the second pillar, as we mentioned in previous lessons and previous times, that the only way that your actions are accepted and are sound is by way of uh, two pillars and the first one is that your intention is sincerely for the sake of Allah this is about Tawheed that you direct all of your worship uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you do not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the second uh, pillar that needs to be uh, standing up and that is needs to be established is that it's in accordance with what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with and then your actions are accepted this is what the Sheikh has mentioned here that we have to follow is following, i.e., following the Prophet Sallallahu in that which he came with, in terms of worship and everything he came with, of course. But just making the point here about worship, the Sheikh is making the point about worship. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, says, "Fal ibadatu tawqifiyatun la yajuzu al itian la yajuzu al itian bi ibadat lam yashraha Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam." Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. من عمل من عمل عملا ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم عليكم بسنتي وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين من بعدي تمسكوا بها وعدوا عليها بالنواجد وإياكم محدثات الأمور فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة so then the Sheikh, he mentions, he says, so, you know, worship, he says, worship, worship is toki fiya. And the best way to explain it is that toki fiya is from the word to stop, to stop. And what's meant here from when the scholars mentioned this, and it's an important point for us to remember, is that toki fiya, it means you stop where, uh, uh, where the Quran stops and you stop where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa stops. It's the Quran and the sunnah. So this is what you do. You don't, um, for example, the Quran says something and you're following that and it also the the uh, the Prophet has said something which corroborates what the Quran says and then you are just thinking of your own way and saying, oh, well, Lord, there's this and there's that and you're doing your own thing. By you doing that and going out of that, then you're not stopping with the Quran and you're, and you're not stopping with what the Prophet has saying. You're going beyond and, and that's where uh, Bid'ah and religious innovations and superstitions, all these things start coming in 
and they take you away from the straight path. So then the Sheikh, he says, worship is tawqifiya. And he says that it is not permissible to come with worship uh, that that have not been legislated by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? They have, not, they have not come in the Quran and they have not come in the Sunnah. And then uh, the Sheikh mentions a hadith and it's a very important one. It was related to, to, what, to what the Sheikh is mentioning and the Sheikh quotes this and he says, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever does an act that is not from our affair, i.e. meaning the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the Sunnah of the Prophet, then it is rejected. So whoever does something that's not from the Quran and that's not from the Sunnah in terms of worship, then it is Rejected and it is goes back to the person who did it, meaning it's not accepted, it's rejected. So then the Shaykh continues, and he, so he goes on to say, and he mentions another beautiful hadith, uh, starting of this hadith, it's a long one, and uh, he just mentions a few lines which are important for us today. And he says that when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Upon you is my sunnah, and the sunnah for, uh, and the sunnah." Of the rightly guided caliphs, the four caliphs, the khalifas, the rightly guided caliphs who come after me. So hold tight on, on to that with your molar teeth. Yeah. And be warned of the, of the newly invented matters from uh, religious innovations and superstitions. For indeed, every newly invented matter is a bid'ah, religious innovation. And every religious innovation is misguidance, and and every misguidance is in the hellfire. So it's it's, it's clear. This is clear to anybody uh, with a with a sound mind and a basic understanding that they can they can understand this. This is clear of a person who wants to follow the truth. This is clear here, absolutely clear. This is like the night and the day here. Uh, there's no. Uh, difficulty in understanding this. So then the Sheikh he, co- he continues and he says, "Fal itiyanu bi ibadatin lam yishraha Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم تأتبر بدعة منكرة منهي عنها وإن قال بها فلان أو فلان أو فعلها من من فعلها من الناس ما دامت خارج عن ما جاء به الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم فإنها بدعة وضلالة فلا يعبد الله إلا بما شرع على لسان رسوله والمحدثات والخرافات كلها حمل باطل ونقص ونقص وضلال على من أتى بها وإن كان يقصد بها الخير ويريد الأجر فإن العبرة ليست بالمقاصد وإنما العبرة بالاتباع بالاتباع وطاعة والانقياد ولو كنا أحرارا نأتي بما نشاء ونستكثر من العبادات ما نشاء لم احتجنا إلى بئثة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم أو لما احتجنا إلى بئثة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم So then the Sheikh makes very important point here He says in this paragraph So you know if you come If, if one comes with worship that hasn't been legislated on the tongue of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Then it's considered to be A religious innovation And it's evil And it's prohibited You don't do this And even if it, 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 One says That you know uh, you know, This person says this and this and Or another person he, he does what he does Whatever from the actions that he's doing If it As long as so, As long as it's Away from what the Prophet Sallallahu is has said and legislated, then it is misguidance and religious innovation. So one doesn't worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala except that which, uh, which the Prophet Sallallahu has legislated and come with the legislation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala with. And then the Sheikh mentions that the newly invented matters and you know the uh, superstitions, all of these actions, they are false. They are false. They are falsehood and they are deficient and they are misguidance and upon the one who does them or who comes with them. And even if he has good intention and he wants good and he wants reward, because the Sheikh says he says that the the lesson or the wisdom or the lesson is not with the intention, but the but the lesson is to be taken from 
uh, what is to be considered is following and being obedient and you know and uh, you know uh, lowering yourself in humbleness as in following the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that which he came with and not being arrogant and doing your own things and going away from actually following the sunnah of the messenger and even if the person was a free man a free person people who are free and they do you know they can do what they want and they increase from the worship whoever they want if that was the case then what was the sheikh's make he says well if that is the case then what was the need of the prophet being sent on his mission to guide the people back to the truth and the deen of islam so that's clear what the sheikh has mentioned there alhamdulillah so then we continue and he's, and the sheikh says walakin min rahmatillahi bina lam uh, lam yakilna الى عقولنا ولم يكلنا الى فلان وعلان من الناس لان هذه الامور مرد مرد مردها الى الشرع الى الله ورسوله ولا ينفع منها الا ما كان موافقا لما شرعه لما شرعه الله ورسوله ففي هذا الابتعاد عن جميع البدع ومن ابتدع شيئا في الدين لم يأتي به الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم فإنه لم يشهد أنه رسول الله لم يشهد لم يشهد الشهادة أو لم يشهد الشهادة الحقيقية لأن الذي يشهد أنه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم شهادة حقيقية يتقيد بما شرعه ولا يحدث شيئا من عنده أو يت أو يتبع شيئا محدثا ممن سبقه. so then the sheikh is mentioning here um, then he says حفظ uh, الله he says so from the mercy of Allah from the mercy of Allah to us the mercy of Allah is that he hasn't uh, left you know he hasn't left us to our own intellects and to this person that person etc from those affairs Rather, uh, Allah sent the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and 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 from that, um, what He has legislated for us. So, meaning that we go back to the Quran and Sunnah, and other than that, then it is misguidance and is bid'ah. And so, if somebody goes away, turns away from the Quran and the Sunnah and the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in following Him. And then he performs actions that are not legislated in the deen of Islam. Then he he falls into religious innovation, bid'ah <coughs> in the religion, and and he's obviously doing things that the Prophet ﷺ hasn't come with. So then the Sheikh says, in summary, as mentioned in the previous paragraphs, that he ha- that is testific- He hasn't really testified that the that the that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is the Messenger of Allah. Really, he's not living up to the testification that is made on his tongue through his actions. And his his testification isn't an actual testification. Because he says the one who testifies that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the, the servant and Messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, then, and, and it is a, a shahada, a true shahada, an actual shahada, that means that he restricts himself to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallam have come with in terms of le- legislation. He restricts himself and follows the legislation that the Prophet sallam came with. And he doesn't bring anything new from himself. Or he follows a thing that has been invented, a newly invented matter from the past, etc. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, هَذَا مَعْنَى شَهَادَةُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدٌ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ لَيْسَتْ أَلْفَاظًا تقال باللسان فقط من غير التزام ومن غير عمل ومن غير تقيد بما جاء به به هذا الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم. So then the Sheikh summarizes here everything that is just mentioned previously and he says so this is the meaning of the testification that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is a messenger of Allah and it isn't just uh, words that you that are said on the tongue only. Um, without sticking to that uh, 
uh, which the Prophet Sallallahu has said and sticking to what you've actually testified with and following the way of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, from the actions and legislation and restricting yourself to that which Allah said and the Rasul Sallallahu said. Because if you do that and stick to, um, if you stick to uh, that which uh, Allah says and the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says and follow in the way of the Khulafa Rashidin, that which Allah, Allah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has commanded us with and that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has also Commanded, commanded us with then that person is on the right path and he's following the Quran and the Sunnah as it should be be followed so now we move on to new section uh, point uh, section 39 and we move on now from the first uh, pillar we're moving on to the second pillar as salah prayer so the shaykh he says for salatu here ruk here min arkan al-islam wa zakatu here ruk thalithu وَهِيَ قَرِينَةُ الصَّلَاةِ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ الصَّلَاةُ عَمَلٌ بَدَنِي وَالزَّكَاةُ عَمَلٌ مَالِي So then the shaykh says, he says, the prayer, it is a pillar, it is a second pillar from the pillars of Al-Islam. And as zaka obligatory charity, it is the third pillar. And it is connected to the prayer. These two pillars are connected to each other. Uh, in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prayer is actions it, uh, are from your bodily actions from moving and cutting out the prayer and az zakah is from the deeds or actions of your, uh, that are to do with your wealth as in giving your wealth in charity yeah the obligatory charity 2.5% of your wealth yeah as mentioned so then the shaykh he goes on to say waqad qala abu bakr siddiq رضي الله عنه والله لا لا أقاتلن من فرق بين الصلاة والزكاة لما امتنع أناس من دفع الزكاة بعد وفاة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم قاتلهم أبو بكر رضي الله عنه وقال والله لا أقاتلن من فرق بين بين الصلاة والزكاة والله لو منعوني قالا وفي رواية إناقا كانوا يؤدونه لرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم لقاتلتهم عليه So basically the Sheikh mentions here about Abu, Bak Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه that, that he mentioned that this happened when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم shortly after the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم had passed away um, some of the people started turning away from paying the zakat but they, they used to pay to the Prophet Sallallahu but then when he passed away some of the groups of the Muslims they started to turn away and stop paying it and so uh, uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu he said that by Allah you know I will fight those who differentiate between as salah the prayer and as zakat the obligatory charity you know, meaning that, you know, this is the same thing the Prophet ﷺ did, you know. So he's, he's following the way of the Prophet ﷺ. And those at the time, they were differentiating between zakat and salah. And we know in the, from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet that these two are connected, just like the Sheikh said earlier, that they are connected. That as salah and as zakat, they are connected. Right? Together. And so this is just mentioning that from uh, from the seerah uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu what, what happened uh, shortly after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with, with some of the people. So this is showing us proof as well that Salah, As-Salah and as zaka are connected together. Right? So then the Shaykh continues and he says فَالزَّكَاةُ حَقٌ وَاجِبٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَهِيَ رُكْنٌ مِنْ أَرْكَانِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَهِيَ قَرِينَةُ الصَّلَاةِ وَهِيَ قَرِينَةُ الصَّلَاةِ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِّنَ الْآيَاتِ وَمِنْهَا هَذِي الْآيَةِ وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ وَيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُ الزَّكَاةِ So then the Shaykh he mentions here, he says that the obligatory charity, the zakat, it is a right, uh, it's an obligation and right in terms of wealth. And it is a pillar from the pillars of Al-Islam. And it is connected to the prayer, as-salah, in the, in the book of Allah, Azza wa Jal. 
and um, and the Sheikh says there are many places within the Quran that this is mentioned. But you know, you see that a salah is mentioned, and then automatically you'll see that the zakat is mentioned as well. You see this in many many places within the Quran, and the Sheikh gives us one example from Surah Al Bayyina. So if we go there, Surah Al Bayyina, Surah Al Bayyina. And they were commanded not but that they should worship Allah and worship none but Him alone, abstaining from ascribing partners to Him, and perform a salat, iqamat a salat, and give zakat, and that is the right religion. So then the Shaykh he continues and he says, Dalil al Tawheed fi awwaliha min qawli ta'ala, wa ma umiru illa liya'budu Allah mukhlisin lahuddin. So the first part of the ayah that we just read there, the Shaykh says that this is evidence of Tawheed. Right? As we mentioned previous times as well, if you remember, some of the brothers who attend, attended those lessons. So then the Sheikh says, هذا هو تفسير التوحيد. This is the explanation of Tawheed. And he says, وَهُوَ إِبَادَةُ اللَّهِ مَا لِخْلَاسِ لَهُ وَتَرْكَ الْإِبَادَةِ مَا سِوَاهِ So then the Sheikh says that this is an explanation of Tawheed. And it is worshipping Allah with sincerity. Right? With sincerity for Him. Yeah? And and leaving leaving off worship to other than Him, so basically directing all of your worship to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sincerely for Him alone. Yeah. So then the Sheikh he continues and, and he says, "Falladina, falladina wa bi'ma'na wahid, mukhlisina lahuddin ay alibada." So then the Sheikh says he says that. Uh, sorry, Faddeen, what Tawheed, what Ibadah, Bimana Wahid. And we mentioned this before as well, the Sheikh mentioned it before. That the Deen, whenever the Deen is mentioned, the Deen and At Tawheed and Al Ibadah. So uh, the Deen, the religion, At Tawheed, uh, you know, and Al Ibadah worship, then they mean the same thing. They, co- they will come with one meaning, they mean the same thing. And then the Sheikh mentions here, Mukhlisina Lahuddin. So Mukhlisina Lahuddin. That they worship Allah and worship none but Him alone. Yeah, abstaining from ascribing partners to Him. Yeah. And i.e. the Shaykh says, Alibada, worship. The Shaykh says, Hada tafsir tawheed. La, la, kama yakuluhu ulama al kalam. Innahu al iqrar bi anna Allah hu al khalik al razik al muhi al muhi al mumit. Hada tawheed al rububiya. Wal matlub huwa tawheed al uluhiya al ladi daat ilayhi al rusul. وَلَا يَصِيرُ الْمُسْلِمْ مُسْلِمًا إِلَّا إِذَا جَاءَ بِهِ So then the Shaykh mentions here that this is the this is tafsir of the Tawheed. And it isn't like what the uh, the people of rhetoric or the people of Kalam or rhetoric say. Like the Jahmiya and the Maturidiya uh, and these types um, and the Ashaira and other than them uh, from the philosophers. The ones who have been affected with philosophy. And they come with these type of things where they say, where the Sheikh mentions quotes them, he says, like, for example, they say, uh, indeed, uh, this Tawheed, Mukhlisin Lahuddin, for example, Tawheed, uh, Tawheed it, it, here it, it means just uh, affirmation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator and the provider and the one who gives life and the one who, who, who causes death. They say this, is, but the Sheikh says that actually, as we all brothers know here, that that is Tawheed al-Rububiyyah. That's the Tawheed of Lordship, Allah's Lordship. The one, he's the one, because, because as you remember from before, the Sheikh mentioned as well previously that the Mushrikeen of uh, Mecca, and even many today, they believe the same thing. They believe in this, that Allah is the Khalik, the Creator, and the one who provides, and the one who uh, gives life and the one who causes death. You know, they believe the same thing. So so the Sheikh says, so therefore, if we take this from the under- correct understanding, then what's actually sought here is Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, the Tawheed of worship. That which the, all the prophets or all the messengers call to, worshipping Allah alone. And how Allah mentioned in this ayah, Mukhlisin, sincerely, Mukhlisin lahuddin, clearly showing us that it's to do with Tawheed al-Uluhiyya. Yeah, and it's Tawheed of worship, worshipping Allah alone and not associating any partners with Him. And so the Sheikh mentions here, and a Muslim doesn't, uh, it doesn't continue to be a Muslim except that, you know, that he comes with this correct belief. Yeah. So then the Sheikh says, أَمَّا مَنْ جَاءَ بِتَوْحِيدَ الرُّبُوبِيَّةِ فَقَدْ فَهَذَا لَيْسَ مُسْلِمًا بِدَلِيلْ أَنَّ الْمُشْرِكِينَ 
يَأْتَقِدُونَهُمْ وَيَنْتِقُونَ بِهِ وَيَأْتَرِفُونَ بِهِ وَلَمْ يَدْ وَلَمْ يُدْخِلْهُمْ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ وَلَمْ يَمْنَعْ وَلَمْ يَمْنَعْ مِنْ قَتْلِهِمْ وَلَمْ يَمْنَعْ مِنْ قَتْلِهِمْ سِبْيَ أَمْوَالِهِمْ تَوْحِيدُهُمْ هَذَا لِأَنَّهُمْ لَيْسُوا مُوَحِّدِينَ لَمَّا أَشْرَكُوا بِاللَّهِ الزَّوَجَنْ فِي الْإِبَادَةِ هَذَا هُوَ تَفْسِيرُ تَوْحِيدٍ مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ لَا مِنْ كِتَابِ فُلَانٍ وَعَلَانٍ كِتَابِ الْجَوْهَرَ أو كتاب المواقف أو كتب العلماء الكلام لا 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 يؤخذ تفسير التوحيد من هذه الكتب وإنما يؤخذ من كتاب الله ومن سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ومن كتب أهل السنة والجماعة الذين يتمسكون ب بكتاب الله وسنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. so then the sheikh he goes on to say he says as for uh, the one who uh, who says uh, uh, who comes with Tawheed al-Rububiyyah the Tawheed of Lordship only but he says that this is not this person is not a Muslim with regards to the evidence that the pagans yeah the Mushrikeen the pagans the polytheists they believe and they profess and pronounce this on their tongues and and they confess to this and profess it uh, uh, they profess the Tawheed al-Rububiyyah but it doesn't enter them into Islam, as mentioned previously. Do you remember at the start of the book of this book? This was mentioned that believing in a tawhid, a rububiya, a tawhid a rububiya, is not enough to enter into Islam. And because of that, even if they say that oh, Allah is the Creator and the Provider and the One who gives life and the One who causes death and the One who disposes of the affairs of the universe, etc., it does not enter them into the deen of Islam. Why? Because they are still associating partners in worship with Allah and they are sharing their worship with other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is deserved, deserving of all worship. See? So that makes sense for us inshallah. And so the shaykh, he goes, so therefore they're not upon Tawheed and they're not Muwahideen. They're not monotheists. Um, and they commit shirk and they uh, associate partners in worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship, yeah? So then the Shaykh says, this is the tafsir of Tawheed from the Kitab of Allah and it's not from uh, the book of this one and that one. For example, he gives examples like a book called Al-Jawhara and another book called Al-Mawaqif. Uh, he says, these are the books of the people of rhetoric, the Kalamists, the people of rhetoric, the ones who have been... Um, uh, have been affected and inflicted with philosophy, Aristotelian type philosophy and just philosophy in general. Yeah, we don't take from them the understanding and the meaning of Tawheed because they don't know it, they don't understand it, and they're upon falsehood. Rather, we take it from the Book of Allah and from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and from the books of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, who who are those who uh, stick to. They hold on to the Kitab of Allah, the Book of Allah, and they hold on to the Messenger, uh, the Sunnah of the Messenger, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then the Shaykh, he goes on to say here, let me just see how long we've got to go. Uh, uh, okay, let me just carry on. We nearly finished, I think, inshallah. Where was I? So then the Shaykh mentions وَدَلِيلُ الصَّلَاةِ فِي قَوْلِ تَعَلَى وَيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَالْمَعْنَى أَنْ يَأْتُوا بِهَا كَمَا أَمْرَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ بِشُرُوتِهَا وَالْكَانِهَا وَوَاجِبَاتِهَا أَمَّا مُجَرَدْ سُورَةِ الصَّلَاةِ فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَكْفِي وَلِهَذَا لَمْ يَقُولْ وَيُصَلُّ بَلْ قَالَ وَيُقِيمُ الصَّل أما الذي يصلي مجرد سورة سورة في أي وقت يشاء أو بدون طهارة وبدون طم طم أنينة ولا يأتي بمتطلبات الصلاة هذا لم يصلي ولهذا قال للمسي ولهذا قال صلى الله عليه وسلم للمسي في صلاته الذي لا يتم إن لا يتم إن ولا يتم إن في صلاته قال لهم ارجع فصلي فإنك لم تصلي ليس مقصود سورة الصلاة من قيام ور من قيام ورقوء وسجود وجلوس فقط ليس هذا المقصود بل بل المقصود 
أن يؤتى بها كما شرى الله سبحانه وتعالى مستوفية لكل مستوفية لكل متطلباتها الشرعية. So then the Sheikh he mentions here so says the evidence for salah is in the speech of Allah which we already mentioned we read the uh, translation the meaning uh, of the ayah wa yuqimu salah and who is and establishing the prayer and the Sheikh said the meaning here is that you uh, is that you come uh, with that which Allah subhanahu wa taala has commanded us with from the conditions of the prayer and the pillars of the prayer on and the uh, obligations of the prayer as for just you know praying or as it seems you know just carrying out the actions you know uh, you know lifting your hands up bowing and uh, getting back up and then uh, prostrating and sitting and etc that is not sufficient and and for that reason the sheikh says we don't say uh, uh, you you sallu that they, they they prayed they prayed for example you sallu uh, rather he says uh, you be say that they establish the prayer, establishing the prayer. And the Sheikh says that the prayer isn't established and upright except if it, if we come with that which Allah has commanded us with, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so as for the one who prays, just you know, with without following those rules, then you know, you can see him praying. It looks like he's praying, but really he isn't praying. So, for example, he might pray any time he pray. He'll pray in any time. He won't stick to the times. Or he won't be upon purification. Or he will read fast and won't be reading with um, contentment, for example, with at a correct pace. And he doesn't come with that which is requested and sought from the prayer. Then this person, he actually hasn't prayed. And this is the reason why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to the person who, who, who wasn't praying good, he wasn't performing his prayer correctly. He said, in, he said to him about his prayer, he said to him, uh, uh, the one who wasn't uh, uh, praying uh, with uh, uh, contentment and properly pausing correctly, was reading fast. He said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, return and pray for indeed you didn't pray. So then the Shaykh goes on to say the intention it isn't for you to look as if you're praying going through the actions for example from for example establishing the prostrations and the bowing etc and sitting only rather he says it, it, that isn't the, 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 uh, the, the, the case here rather he says it, the intention or what's sought here and what's requested is that you come with that which Allah has legislated subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you fulfill all of that which Allah has commanded upon you from the prayer to establish the prayer and as it should be established in accordance with the sharia, the Islamic legislation. Okay, so then the shaykh continues and he says, we're going to the five, ten minutes. We'll just finish on the hour mark inshallah today. Barakallahu feek. Then the shaykh says, ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ دَلِيلُ الزَّكَاءِ بِقَوْلِ تَعَالَى وَيُؤْتُ الزَّكَاءِ يدفع الزكاة للمستحقين لها الذين ذكرهم الله تعالى في قوله إنما الصدقات للفقراء والمساكين والعاملين عليها والمؤلفة والمؤلفة قلوب قلوبهم وفي الرقاب والغارمين في سبيل الله وابن السبيل فريضة من الله والله عليم حكيم ذكر ثمانية مصارف أو ذكر ثمانية مصارف وحص وحصرها بإنما فلا يكون صرفها في غير هذه المصارف الثمانية فمن صرفها في غير مصارفها الثمانية لم يكن قد آتى الزكاة ولو أنفق أموالا طائلة ملايين أو مليارات وسماها زكاة ولا تكون زكاة حتى طوضع في مواضعها التي حصرها الله تعالى فيها هذا معنى إيتاء الزكاة وأيضا في وقتها أي يخرجها وقت وجوبها لا يتبطأ لا يتبطأ ويتأخر ويتكاسل طيبة بها نفسه 
أي لا يعتبرها مغرما أو خسارة وإنما يعتبرها مغنما له هذه الأمور الثلاثة هي دين القيم الدين الملة القيمة so we'll just stop there for a second so then the sheikh he mentions here he says then uh, uh, that the original author the sheikh he mentions that uh, he, uh, the original author mentions zakah بقولتال oh, he mentions in terms of what Allah mentioned in the Quran here sorry so uh, uh, going back to surah to bayna that particular verse yu'tu zakah and the ones who give zakat yeah give the obligatory charity they pay the zakat to the ones who are deserving of it and um, and those uh, Allah, those who are deserving of it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran in surah at tawbah which we read the ayah of, so let's go to surah at tawbah surah at tawbah Give me one second, please. Verse 60. Let's read verse 60. as Here it means zakat. Uh, only for the fuqara, poor, and al-masakin, the poor and those employed to collect the funds, and for to attract the hearts of those who have been inclined towards al-Islam, and to free the captives, and for those in debt, and for Allah's cause, i.e. for mujahidun, those fighting in the holy wars, and for the wayfarer, a traveler who is cut off from everything, a duty imposed by Allah, and Allah is the all-knower, the all-wise. So that's clear. Those eight people that zakat can be paid on. Yep. Anything else is sadaqah, right? So so this is good for us to know. I make a note of the ayah. I can always refer back to and read the tafsir as well. The Sheikh then says uh, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned eight, eight uh, types of people that are deserved of the zakat, the obligatory charity. And and so uh, the Sheikh mentions here that Allah used the word, the particle innama, meaning that it's been restricted to these eight types of people. Right? And he mentioned that. Uh, and, and then the Sheikh says, even if it's given to somebody else, right, uh, out of these eight types of people, then it's not considered zakat. Even if somebody says, yeah, I'm giving zakat, it isn't considered zakat, basically. This is what the shaykh is saying over here. And also, in terms of giving it, and it's the right time. So everybody has their time period from when they're earning, and a year has passed on it, that you should basically pay on the correct time. That's obligatory. And you shouldn't uh, delay, you shouldn't slow, and delay, and wait, and be lazy. Right? Right? Because you shouldn't be like this. And the shaykh mentions here, you shouldn't consider it a fine. You shouldn't see zakat as a fine and you shouldn't see zakat as a loss. Rather, you should see it as profit. As a profit. Right? And a good thing. You shouldn't take it as a negative. No, never. You should give it open-heartedly, happy, pleased that you're, you're carrying out an act of worship and you're helping your brothers. Alhamdulillah. So, so then the Shaykh goes on to say, Hadil umura thalitha. So he mentioned the third affair here within the surah. Right at the end, the final uh, words that are, are said by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Deenul Qayyimah, that this is the upright religion, that this is the re religion, uh, uh, and it's the upright religion, the ones who pray, the ones who are upon Tawheed of Allah, the ones who do not commit shirk, the ones who pray, the ones who give zakat, this is the right religion. Yeah? And it is the the religion that's on the, that is the straight path, yeah? Then the Shaykh says, Hada Dalilul Salah wa Zakah wa Tafsir Tawheed. So the Shaykh says, in this surah, Surah Al Bayna, this is the evidence of the prayer and the zakat and the tafsir of Tawheed. Right? So I think what we'll do is, we're going on to an hour now. I wanted to finish the section on fasting, but we finished the section on prayer. So we'll, uh, prayer and zakat. So I think we've gone through enough today. So what we'll do is, we'll stop there. Uh, and we'll continue from point number 40, insha'Allah, next week. Barakallahu feekum. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ilanta wa astaghfiruka wa tubi alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.